this was almost an unfinished, unfinished project. But I was, I, I, I can't go out like that. Lately, I have heard this term that says, done is better than perfect. The dress is less than perfect. And in this case, I will tell you that I appreciate that saying because, you know, I actually had to walk away from this dress, like maybe twice, because I'm like, it's getting the best of me and I just need to chill. Hey, 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 it's Terry, Virginia's daughter. I am back today with Butterick 5598 this trench coat dress, I call it. This pattern came out in 2011, and I would venture to say that I purchased this pattern right after it was released, or at least not long after. I really, really, really like this pattern when it first came out. I had this gray Ponte knit that was in Virginia stash, and I thought it would be perfect. I I wanted a knit trench. The pattern actually calls for, let's see, the suggested fabrics are stretch wovens, linen, lightweight denim, and lightweight broadcloth. Unsuitable for obvious diagonals and allow uh, fabric to match plaids or stripes. I can't imagine making this out of plaids. Although, right when I was almost ready to be finished with this dress, I decided I wanted to make another one. I was like, oh, I think I'm gonna cut another one out and do a tutorial and you know, and it just so happens that fabric is a, you know, small stripe, so. And it's a medium weight knit and I lined it with a lightweight knit. It feels like Trico, but it's not as stretchy as Trico, but it's just about as light as Trico. It really feels good on, and the dress has a little weight to it. I remember being so excited when this dress came out. I checked pattern review. I even made my comments on pattern review. All the dresses were grand. I mean, they were cute, different colors, different fabrics, but there were two things that popped up in more than one review. The first one was this pivoting that goes on. It is step five. In step four, you make a front pleat. It's very cute, it's got a lot of details to it. Step five, you pin the side front to the front and match the symbols, you clip where necessary, stitch, and you pivot at a large circle. So let me get the pattern piece for you. I don't know how well you're gonna see this, but I'll try my best. This is the front. The pattern piece comes in one long piece like this. Can you see that? There's a pleat right here. And of course, you know, you make your pleat right here and it makes a really nice pleat just right along this edge here on the outside. Well, then you have to attach this side front piece to this piece. Can you see that? I'm making that clear. So obviously when you get to this point, you have to pivot. And I'll do a flat lay. I'll leave these pattern pieces out. I'll do like a flat lay and show you what I'm talking about. And a lot of the reviewers said that even though they're experienced at pivoting, using that technique over and over and over again, that this was very difficult. So I didn't even bother. What I did was I stitched the shorter edge first in one single seam, and then I stitched the longer part to meet it. So I had two lines of stitching that met together. I decided not to pivot. The second thing that comes up quite a bit is the lining. This is where I had an issue. More than one review said that the lining, like what's going on with the lining? The pattern came out in 2011. There were some reviews that were done 
And then in 2017, there was a person that was like, I know this is an old pattern, but you know, I'm having trouble with the lining. I really want to finish this project. I think maybe only one person responded to that person. And it was like the comment that the reviewer made was like, you know, this for me was a long, long time ago. Like I don't even have the dress anymore, but I felt so bad for the person. I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm going to show some footage here, which hopefully will be helpful to anybody. Because if you have this as an unfinished project, get ready to finish it up. Okay. Especially if the lining was your issue. This is the second project that I have finished from round five. I gotta tell you, I've gotten a little distracted. I should have been done with round five. Round five, I have one, two, I have three projects done. I'll be starting the fourth project. And my hope is that the next video, no, the next video that I put out will be finished projects for round five. So far I have recorded eight rounds of unfinished projects and I probably have about three more to go. So, you know, I don't have time to be getting distracted, but what I will say is it's never too late to get back on track. I'm back on track now. Let's talk about Butterick 5598. How do you work through confusing or complicated pattern instructions? Because obviously this was a problem for more than one person. And that's only the people that you know about, like, right? So there's probably, who knows how many dresses, you know, how many Butterick 5598s are in people's sewing labs and sewing studios just waiting to be finished because that lining was just way too confusing. It made me think about how I work my way through confusing or difficult pattern instructions. And I just wanted to share that with you. Admittedly, I don't always read through pattern in sewing instructions prior to starting a project. As a matter of fact, I hardly, I, I never do. Let me just say that. There have been times that I have taken a pattern with me like to a doctor's office or someplace where I'm going to be waiting. But you know, now you got the cell phone and I'm on it. Being in my sewing lab puts me in a frame of mind. And so that's when I really look at sewing instructions. And perhaps I should try that. I mean, I hear people say that, you know, it helps them and maybe I'll do another experiment. Did you see my experiment? On stitching in the ditch. You gotta watch that video. Just watch it, it's an experiment. <laughs> That's why I call this my sewing lab. The first thing that I do is to take the terminology used in the pattern and make sure I am using the pattern piece the right way. Where's that um, side front? Okay, I wanna make sure I'm working with the side front and sometimes it'll say right edge, lower left edge, upper front edge, and so I always try to make sure my terminology and my pattern piece go hand in hand so I can make sure I'm doing the right thing with the right part of the pattern. The next thing I do is I look at the illustrations. And this is how I knew that something was wrong with this Butterick 5598 lining. This is where my mind started saying, okay, Terry, you are doing something wrong. You got to figure out what it is. Because the illustrations are like a visual representation of the words, the pattern, you know, the instructions, I'm always looking at the instructions and the illustration, the instructions, the illustration. And then I'm looking at my garment and I'm going back and forth and just try to match up what I did. The next thing I do is I go further along in the instructions. I read the next step, I look at the illustration. I look at the illustration that I'm stuck on and then I look at the illustration after that and see if I can notice any differences. And then I may have to go further than that. So I just, I go further along in the pattern to see if there's something that I'm gonna see that's like, oh, okay, you know, that's gonna snap for me. And hopefully it does by then. The final thing I do is I will put it on the dress form the way I'll be wearing it. And then I'll work my way backwards if I can. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so let's talk about this lining. This is step 36. Now, let me just pause here and say that I'm very cautious about calling out pattern instructions because I feel like you know, these people are experts. I don't know enough about the writing process for these things to know. I do know when I don't understand something, but usually when I go back, it could be my interpretation. That's my personal opinion. Weigh in, 
Let me know what you think. All right, the last thing you do before you get to step 36, before you stitch this underarm edge, is you attach the front facing and the lining to the dress. That's step 35. Step 36. The instructions for step 36 says, lift up lining. Stitch underarm edges together between small and large circles as shown and then trim. I went through this process about three times. The first time I did it, I flipped the whole lining over so that both right sides were together. So the whole right side of the dress was to the right side of the lining and I stitched both of the underarm edges just the way the pattern said and I flipped it over. When I did that, I was unable to turn the dress, you know, right side out. I just kept experiencing this endless turnabout, aroundabout. If you imagine that the arms were enclosed, so the sleeves were enclosed, when you turn the dress right side out, the sleeves were in between the lining and the, the dress on the inside of the dress. So I took it apart and then I just did one sleeve. Well, when I did one sleeve, you know, it flipped because this whole other part of the dress was open. And so I was able to do it that way. But then when I went to stitch, cause I'm all happy. I'm like, oh, this is it. Yeah, this is good. This is good. But once I stitched that other sleeve, the same way I stitched the first sleeve, you know, again, I had the same problem. So what I did was I studied the illustration and I realized that in this illustration, you don't see the sleeve, but the way I was stitching it up, you did see the sleeve. And let's take a closer look at this part. This part, it looks like, so this is the underarm edge here. And then there's another seam here. This is obviously the dress right here, yeah? And I'm like, well, why does that look like that? Because the way it looks for me is I can see my sleeve here, but the sleeve is not shown anywhere in this picture. That's how I knew I had done something wrong. Lift up lining, stitch underarm edges together between small and large circles as shown trim. Don't turn the whole lining over. Just lift it up enough to stitch the edges together and then let it go back down, each one. So don't turn the whole entire lining over. It just means to lift up the lining on the edge that you're stitching, st lift up that particular part. So everything is isolated to these edges in this part of the lining and this part of the dress. So you just lift the lining up enough to put, you know, to sew that together and then you flip it back down.
you do the other arm the same way. You just flip the lining up enough to get right sides together, you know, pin it, make sure it's nice and straight, stitch it, underline it, you do underline it, and then you put it back down. it's right here in the illustration. Of course, it's my dress, so I have my other issues. I think that the next issue that I dealt with has to do with the weight of my fabric. The carriers here, very unsightly. I don't particularly care the way they look. I played with the thread tension. I played with the stitch length. I played with the presser foot pressure. I mean, I tried to do all that I could, but it just did not look that great. And I don't know. I mean, I know there's probably a solution, but I didn't know what it was at the time. So I am not sure that I will leave these carriers on. So you know, when you create a carrier, you fold it in half and you unfold it, you fold it in on itself and then you fold it in half again. The weight of this fabric made that rather thick. Well, by the time I folded the edges over to attach to the dress, the top and the bottom parts of the carrier, it was just way too thick. And I was just like, oh, here we go. The last thing that almost took me out, I said, listen, the dress has some wounds too. Now listen, we both got wounded on this one, was the buttonholes. You really have to be focused when you're sewing. You really have to think about what it is that you're doing, what did you do before, you know, and even what you have to do after. I mean, it's just, it's not a mindless kind of thing, right? You really have to think about it. So I had not marked the buttonholes previously. Of course I had to mark them, so I marked them afterwards, but I didn't account for the five eighths inch seam allowance. So what happened was when I looked at the dress, instead of the buttons being evenly spaced on both sides, yeah, they were like over here like this. You know what I mean? I think I had done all five buttonholes before I realized I had done that. So I had to take them all out. Prior to that, this machine that I have now, I've had it for about a year in February. This year, make, this month makes a year that I've had it. I'm still getting used to it. When I tested the buttonholes on the scrap piece of fabric, looking good, looking good, looking good. Well, something would happen. I didn't like the way it looked. I'm very particular about things, especially sewing. I got that from my mother. She was self-taught. And so she went the extra, extra, extra mile to make sure her stuff was as perfect as possible. And she passed that on to me. Some of the buttonholes, I didn't like the way they look. So I picked them out, did them over. On this particular machine, you put this little lever down. It's a sensor that tells the buttonhole, you know, tells the machine when to go back and when to go forward. And well, actually I think when to reverse or whatever. And of course, just like every other buttonhole, but there's a space in the back for your button to measure properly. My buttons were too big. They wouldn't fit. And so, you know, there's these little grooves I would, I'd have to to measure the clicks and listen to the clicks and make sure I had the right amount of clicks. And the buttonholes were a hot mess. I like it. I'm sure I can wear it with heels. I can wear it with tennis shoes. I can wear it in the springtime. And this was a spring release. I remember seeing that on some blog. I am so glad it's over. I did not do the top stitching. The pattern would have you do top stitching and edge stitching. 
And again, this fabric just, I don't, it's gotta be right. You know what I mean? If the stitch is too tight, I mean, you all know that already. So if you have this pattern, and first of all, if it's in your unfinished projects, take it out. Hopefully this video will help you. If you wanna ask me any questions, feel free to do that. You are gonna be happy that you made this dress. If you haven't made it yet, but you do have the pattern, I say go for it. Spring is coming up, be a real cute spring dress, I think. You will notice that my buttons are different. At this point, I just decided, you know what, Terry, you have an abundance of things. Now I need 12 buttons, actually 14. So there's supposed to be two buttons on the inside, which is a very nice detail also. They're a little smaller, but they go on the inside since this comes so far over. I didn't do that. I said, you know what? I am going to use what I have. I don't have 12 of the same buttons, but I do have 12 buttons. So we gonna make it work with 12 buttons. And I will leave you with three things. The first is that it's never too late to get back on track. If you are off track, take it from me. It's never too late. It doesn't matter how long you've been off track, you can get back on track. And now is as good of time as any to do so. The second thing that I would say is use what you have. To me, this is very creative, wouldn't you say? I mean, you could set a trend, like using different buttons, just because you are just doing your thing. Do your thing. <laughs> I just added that one now. That's number four, but I'm out of order. So the third thing that I would say to do is to persevere, perseverance, persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. You can't give up. There are gonna be projects, you know, even situations in your life. Persevere, work your way through it. I'm in it with you, you're in it with me. And last, the last thing I'll say is be you. If you got a dress with mismatched buttons <laughs> and nobody knows your story, okay, so be who you are and feel good about it, right? You don't have to feel bad about being yourself because you are somebody. You feel me? We all are somebody. There are some irregularities here. There's a part here on the collar that I'm not too satisfied with. The carriers, the buttonholes. Now, another thing on this dress is I use a lighter color thread. That's because again, I'm going back to having using what I have. I have a lot of thread and I should be able to use white thread if I want, you know what I mean? So my skill should be such a point, I can use any color thread and it, it doesn't like, oh no, you, you know, your stitching is crooked or you know, whatever. So, you know, getting there, I'm getting there. Raise your hand if you're with me and you're getting there, okay? There's a funky thing that was going on with the hem too. If something is pulling or uneven, I don't like the way that looks, I hate to see that. So there was some tugging that was going on on one of the sides, the left or right, and I took it out. And so when I took it out, I had to like take it apart and restitch it. It looks somewhat better, but it's not perfect. So you know what I'm about to say. I can't thank you enough. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. As always, until next time, take care.